This is section 3.1.3, .3, and now we get into non-homogeneous equations. So the first thing that they want to talk about in the non-homogeneous equations is what they look like. So you're going to have y equal, and then this set of um, solutions, this set of solutions should look very familiar. This is actually the solutions to the homogeneous DE, okay? So remember, non-homogeneous means that on the right-hand side of the equation, you don't have zero. But this part of the solution is the solutions you would get if you had the equation equal to zero on the right-hand side. But notice that because it's a non-homogeneous, you have an extra set of solutions right here, okay? This extra set of solutions is called the particular solution for the non-homogeneous equation. The rest of it, the part that solved the homogeneous system, this part, right, it's the same up here as it is down here, is actually called the complementary function. Okay, the complementary function. Complementary function is essentially the solutions to the homogeneous equation if you pretended that your DE was homogeneous. And then this part, the particular solution, is the solution you would get considering that it's not a homogeneous problem. So if you want to write the solutions of a non-homogeneous equation, you need to have the solutions for the homogeneous uh, DE, and you need to have the solutions, the particular solutions for that specific non-homogeneous equation, okay? So all we need to do in this section, we're not actually going to find these solutions and find these solutions just yet, okay? That will be later in chapter three. For right now, we just wanna verify, okay? So I want your eyes to start paying attention this right here, it's telling me to verify that the given two parameter family of functions is a general solution of the non-homogeneous DE. Notice that in the DE, you have a double prime. When you have a double prime, you should end up with two solutions, okay? Two general solutions. They are right here. This is one and this is my second, okay? And notice that they have the constant coefficients in front of them already. So this part right here is considered the complementary function. This is the solution to this DE if the entire right-hand side were zero, okay? But because it's not zero, notice that we're adding another function over here on the side. This function over here on the side is the particular solution to this specific non-homogeneous equation, okay? If the right-hand side was something different, that would only change this part of the solution, okay? So let's, for instance, say that only 2e to the 2x was on the right-hand side of the DE, okay? It's the only term on the right-hand side of the DE my general solution would still include these two general functions, but the particular solution would be different, okay? I don't know exactly what it would be right now, but it would not be all of these three terms, okay? Now, what they want us to do is they want us just to verify that this is in fact a solution to this DE. So what we need to do that is we just need to find out, we know what y is, it's this function. We need to figure out what y prime is and we need to find out what y double prime is so that when I plug them into this side of the equation, you want to verify that you get what's on this side of the equation. So first we did our computation for y prime. Looking at the first term, this is just a constant times the derivative of e to the 2x, which is 2 e to the 2x. For the second term, we have our constant, but this is a product, a function in terms of x times another function in terms of x. So we used our product rule. The first 
times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. Okay. Then we moved on to the third term. But again, we noticed a product. So we did the first term times the derivative of the second plus the second term times the derivative of the first. Then we moved on to the third term. Derivative is one. And the fourth term's derivative is zero. And so we just multiplied this out and cleaned it up. So here's c1 times 2e to the 2x is 2c1e to the 2x. Here if I distribute my c2, I end up with 2c2x-e to the 2x, which is this term here. Here I would just end up with c2 times e to the 2x. Over here, inside here, I would end up with 2x squared to the 2x. Here I end up with 2x e to the 2x, and I still have my plus 1. I don't need to write the minus 0. However, I do need to find the second derivative in order to check this de. So we kept the 2c1 here as a constant, and we took the derivative of e to the 2x, which was 2 e to the 2x. Then we took 2c2 as our constant, but we noticed we had to apply the product rule here. So we did the first function times the derivative of the second plus the second function times the derivative of the first. Here we took our c2 as our coefficient, took the derivative of e to the 2x. Here we took 2 as our coefficient, and then we took the product rule of these two. So the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. Same thing for this term, another product. Two constant, but first function times the derivative of the second function plus the second function times the derivative of the first function. And then of course the derivative of one is just zero. Then from there we multiplied and distributed. So 2c1 times 2e to the 2x is 4c1e to the 2x. Here we've got to distribute. So we end up with 2 times 2, which is 4c2xe to the 2x squared. Or I'm sorry, e to the 2x. Then 2c2 times this term, which is just 2c2e to the 2x. Then this term's all by itself. It's just, um, this should actually be 2. Oops. That should be 2c2e to the 2x. And then we have this times this, which is 4x squared e to the 2x. We have this term times this term, which would be 4x e to the 2x. And then we have 2 times this term, which is 4x e to the 2x. And we have 2 times this term, which is 2e to the 2x. And write the equal to zero part. So then what we did was we wrote all of this down and we tried to combine any like terms we might have had. So we noticed that we had 4c1 e to the 2x. It's the only term with the c1 in it so we just brought it down. Okay. As far as c2 times x we had 4c2x and it's the only term with c2 and an x. So we just brought that term down. But here we had 2c2 e to the 2x plus another 2c2 e to the 2x. So in total, we had 4c2 e to the 2x. Here we only have 4x squared e to the 2x, and it's the only term like that. Here we had 4x e to the 2x and another 4x e to the 2x. So we got 8x e to the 2x. And then this term is the only term like it, so we brought that one down. Now instead of plugging all of this in for y's double prime and then minusing 4y prime plus 4y horizontally, we went ahead and did it vertically so we can match up our like terms um, and so that we would have enough space to do this. Okay, So since we already have y double prime written here, we went ahead and calculated what would negative 4y prime look like. So this was our y prime function, so we went in and we multiplied each term by negative 4. So we ended up with negative 8c1 e to the 2x, we ended up with negative 8c2x e to the 2x, we ended up with negative 4c2 e to the 2x, we ended up with negative 8x squared e to the 2x, and we ended up with negative x e negative 8x e to the 2x 
and we ended up with a negative 4. I didn't put it under here because these two are not like terms. I'm trying to keep my like terms lined up, okay? Now we move on to plus 4y. That's the rest of the function we need. So we take y and we multiplied every term by 4. So here we get 4c1 e to the 2x. Here we get 4c2x e to the 2x. Here we get 4x squared e to the 2x. Here we get 4x and here we get negative 8. So then we combine all of our like terms. Well, notice you have four of these, then minus eight, then plus four. So there's none of those terms left over when you combine everything. Over here, again, four minus eight plus four, none of these terms left. Four minus four, none of those terms left. Four minus eight plus four, none of those terms left. Eight minus eight, none of those terms left. However, you do still have two to the two x, 4x, and then this makes negative 12 as a constant. So your left hand side reads all of these terms when you add them all up. Your right hand side, when you add all of that stuff up, you end up with these two terms. Is this equivalent to the DE that you were given? It is. So you have verified that. So I want you guys to practice some more verifying with these four particular problems, 31, 32, 34, and 35. You'll really get some exercise with taking derivatives and you'll also get some exercise with your algebra. So make sure you take a look at those problems. You try to do them before we have class on Thursday. Thursday's class we're going to dedicate to answering questions and then continuing to finish up the rest of this section hopefully before we can start the next one.